All right, final segment of the night tonight. Uh, we go to TV3's Jordi Sunye in Barcelona, Spain. And as always, uh, we love Jordi, Jordi's insights uh, on everything La Liga and football in Barcelona. So let's, Jordi, let's go right away to the Bolan de Or. Okay, we'll start. We've had two big winners here. Let's start with Leo Messi, getting it for his eighth time. You're in Barcelona. Uh, this award ceremony taking place in France. Kind of some of your reaction thoughts from the fans in Barcelona for Messi getting the ace. Well, every time Lionel Messi wins the Ballon d'Or, even if he's not playing for Barcelona anymore, it's it's like he had won it for Barcelona, uh, even if he's playing right now for Inter Miami. Because, uh, as you know, there's uh, there's still this kind of love be between the two parts. And in the press conference after the Ballon d'Or, uh, Lionel Messi said that uh, he had won the previous seven Ballons d'Or thanks to the fact he was playing for the best club ever, which was FC Barcelona. So this has been read here here in the city as uh, yeah, declaration of love by Lionel Messi to Barcelona after these two years in which he was away from the city playing for Paris Saint-Germain and then into Miami. And it, it seemed his relationship with the, with the club uh, had a little bit uh, cut or, or had faltered a little bit. But this this statement by Lionel Messi after yesterday's gala, after Monday's gala, was a proof of uh, Lionel Messi uh, still loves Barcelona and still wants to return to Barcelona uh, when, when he's uh, finished his career. So um, it, it's like a Barcelona player winning the World Cup, Lionel Messi. Uh, sorry, winning the Ballon d'Or. Uh, Lionel Messi winning it for, for the eighth time. And I understand there can be a little controversy because there you have Erling Broad Holland that has won everything um, club-wise uh, with Manchester City, Premier League. Well, a treble, in fact, broke um, goal-scoring records. There you have Kylian Mbappe. But you have to consider that the Ballon d'Or is voted by people from all around the world. Uh, you are from the States. Uh, I'm a Spanish guy, so we have easy access to European football leagues. But there are many places in, in the planet that don't have this easy access to European leagues. So maybe the best possibility to watch international football is the World Cup. So the World Cup, what happens in the World Cup has a, a, a very important weight, let's, let's put it like this, uh, while voting the Ballon d'Or. And of course, Messi, uh, I, I wouldn't say alone, but Messi was so important for Argentina for winning their third World Cup. And that's that's been decisive for, for him for winning the eighth Ballon d'Or. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. I mean, uh, the World Cup, uh, and, and I think it's a good thing because it still reminds us that the pinnacle of the sport is, is winning winning the World Cup. And it's it's hard to argue with what Holland's done, but um, he's he's got a lot more time, I think. All right, we're talking to Jordi Sunye, TV3. And uh, so look on the women's side, Ayatana Bonmati. Well, wait, before I get to her, I just want to go back to Messi and something you said. I, I think this is the endearing quality that we see in America now that he's at Inner Miami, the way he complimented Barcelona, the club, saying that, you know, you win things when you're on exceptional teams with exceptional players. And, and I think his humility is something that everybody gets really attracted to. Yeah, I, I think two years after he left, um, things uh, or, or, or his feelings are let, let's let's say a little bit colder. I mean, when you leave Barcelona, it, it was it was such a disaster for him. He, you remember his press conference to announce he was leaving, crying all the time. He was in tears all the time. He was incapable of of uh, saying two sentences together, uh, and and feelings are so so intense. Then two years after that. You have all the time to think. You have seen that it's, um, as we say here, it's it's very cold outside Barcelona. So uh, Paris Saint-Germain is not Barcelona. Of course, he may be uh, happy at Inter Miami. But yeah, Barcelona is Barcelona. It's the city in which he arrived uh, when he was 13. They paid for uh, the medical treatments he needed to to get strength, to get height. Uh, Barcelona made made Messi uh, the player that he's been during all these years. It it has been, let's say, a mutual collaboration between the two. Uh, Messi wouldn't have been Messi without Barcelona. Barcelona wouldn't have been the great Barcelona of Pep Guardiola without Lionel Messi. So, it, it's it's this this feeling between the two, this the relationship between the two is is bound to get recovered. 
um, and and it's being recovered. And um, the the idea of the club is all right. Messi knows he he wants to go back to Barcelona, and he knows that the club is preparing a kind of homage to to all his career. The idea for Barcelona is staging this this big. Uh, Homage to Messi's career once uh, the new Camp Nou is completed. That should be that should be in full 2024 in a year's time. It it, it won't be easy, but the new stadium uh, is supposed to be finished in a year's time. So that will be. I think this will be the the point that will set the new beginning for the relationship between the two. Uh, the path is being prepared. The path is being laid, and yeah, I really think um, Messi will will. And his career, uh, considering himself n not a one club man, but nearly, nearly a one club man, because many of the things he has achieved uh, have been thanks to to Barcelona, of course. It's amazing to me to watch the uh, award ceremony in France, and you know there you see the commissioner of Major League Soccer, Don Garber. You see the owner, Jorge Mas. You see David Beckham, all intertwined with Lionel Messi now, which is pretty amazing. All right, we move on now. Ayatana Bonmati, uh, very deserving of the Ballon d'Or, uh, won the World Cup with Spain, uh, won everything with Barcelona, the league, the Champions League. Uh, I'm very impressed with her, not only on the field, but off it. Yeah, uh, first of all, pronunciation lesson, it's Ayatana Bonmati. You have to. Aitana Bonmati. There we go. Yeah, you have to stress the the I. Um, fantastic player on and off the pitch, as as you said. She has a a, a very interesting story, uh, because uh, her two surnames are Bonmati Conca. You know, in Spain we have two surnames. Uh, Bonmati is the surname of the mother. Conca is the surname of the father. That's contrary to Spanish naming customs. Uh, my name is Jordi Sunye. Sunye is the surname of my father. I have a second surname, which is Capella, which is the surname of my mother. Um, and uh, her parents are both uh, literature teachers uh, at the secondary school in, in her hometown, San Pedro de Rivas, which is uh, like 30 kilometers south of Barcelona. And they, they are very cultured people. And uh, I, I would even say with a left-wing thinking with a progressive thinking and her mother was campaigning for uh the spanish uh government to allow the order of the surnames to be changed so she was born while her mother was fighting for this and um her father accepted that uh when aitana was born she was given the two surnames of the mother uh when the law was passed allowing uh Anybody that 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 wants to do it to change the the order of the surnames, she became Aitana Bomati Conca. Uh, that's the name she she has right now. So she comes from a from a very uh, I, I wouldn't say special, but a, a, a very uh, as I said, culture family uh, that has given her a, a very special education in terms of of uh, respecting uh, diversity, respecting disabled people. Respecting everyone, so uh, that's why I say she's she, she's a fantastic uh, on and off the pitch because off the pitch, his uh, sorry she's collaborating with with the Jochen Cry Foundation. Uh, she's doing many other things, and on the pitch, you heard uh, some months ago Pep Guardiola uh, saying, uh, "I see Aitana Bomati play, and and I see Andres Iniesta dressed as as a woman because she's." Her type of play is is clearly the Iniesta one. The way of moving, the way of, of understanding the game, uh, the 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 capability she has for appearing in in goal scoring positions. Because uh, last year she scored, I think, it was fourteen goals, and and for a uh, an, an attacking midfielder, number eight, that's her position, number eight. That that's a good amount of goals, fourteen goals, even it's for Barcelona women, that the team that wins that wins everything. Uh, in Spain these days. Anyway, Glenn fully deserved because she won the league. She won the Spanish uh, Super Cup. She won the Champions League. She was uh, the MVP in the Champions League, in the Women's Champions League final. Won the World Cup with Spain. MVP of the tournament. So uh, I think there's no player, man or woman, that has won the Ballon d'Or uh, 
that that has so many merits for winning the Ballon d'Or in a single season. So it it was clearly and fully deserved, even ahead of a fantastic player uh, like Sam Kerr, who was the second one in in the ranking. Huge event for Barcelona as both Leo Messi and Eitan Bonmati uh, both win the Ballon d'Or. All right, let's move on to the Classico. This was one we were all excited about. It was Ancelotti versus Xavi. Uh, everything uh, happening in this one. All right, so let's let, let's uh, you know first forty five minutes. I would give a slight edge to to Barcelona overall. A very even game to me, and an even game that was decided by a new superstar in the Classico, Jude Bellingham. Yeah, uh, you saw Barcelona players dressed in Rolling Stones kit with that famous Mick Jagger song. It was <laughs> part of uh, Barcelona's association with Spotify. But Madrid ended singing Hey Jude, like the Beatles. So uh, <laughs> jokes apart, uh, uh, the feeling in Barcelona is that it was uh, an unfair win by Real Madrid. A draw would have probably been fairer because... The second goal by Jude Bellingham was was a lucky goal. There was this rebound uh, uh, by Luka Modric uh, that made uh, Ingo Martinez uh, unable to to reach that ball. But one thing about uh, Real Madrid is um, when you play Real Madrid and you are able to dominate them, if you prepare the game correctly, and many teams have, have done this, for example, Manchester City two years ago, you can have the feeling that you are dominating Real Madrid and and they are in your hands. You you can't, if you allow me to use this word, you, you can't kill them. But the thing with Real Madrid is that they don't feel uncomfortable defending. So you may think that if if you have Real Madrid defending, uh, you, you, you are really dominating them. But Real Madrid are, are, are a team that don't feel uncomfortable if, if they have to defend in several phases of the game. So that's what happened on, on, on Saturday. I think Barcelona were better in, in the first half. But I think there was a turning point. They hit the post twice. Uh, Fermin Lopez, the young Fermin Lopez in the first half. And then that had her by Inigo Martinez in the second half. And from then, from then on, I think psychologically, Barcelona lost some edge. Uh, I, I can't imagine the situation. You're winning against Real Madrid. You scored in the sixth minute of the game, thanks to Ilkay Gundogan. Uh, you hit two posts. And then you start a thing, and, and of course, that's very Catalan. Uh, what if they score? We scored a goal. We hit the, the post twice. We are being unlucky. What if they score? And uh, contrary to, to what Real Madrid are used to do, Barcelona don't know how to defend. So if you look at the first Jude Bellingham's goal, all Barcelona team, not only the defense, the midfield players are sitting so deep in their own box. So this allows Jude Bellingham to shoot from 25 meters and score. So they, they lost this psychological edge. And from then on until the end of the game, it, it was all Real Madrid. But uh, I, I still think uh, a draw was, was, was a good result for both considering what happened. And uh, I, I suppose you have heard this... Uh, since I wouldn't say heavy, but sincere criticism by Ilkay Gundogan after the game. Have you? Yeah, he was not happy. Um, the thing is, Ilkay Gundogan, well, uh, for, for listeners that, that don't know, uh, after the game, uh, in uh, an interview for the, inter the La Liga International news feed, Ilkay Gundogan said, well, I, I, I've come into a dressing room, the Barcelona dressing room, and I, I expected after, after this defeat, which is not, necessary for us it's it's a bad defeat for us and and we started winning and, and Real Madrid overcome the, the the deficit so I expected the dressing room to to be full of of anger of of deception and he found a dressing room like if you listen Xavi after the game he was saying he was like well we, we we couldn't do anything else we played well for 60 minutes we did well we were unlucky the team is improving uh we're in in the right path it's a pity that we lost no man you are barcelona you have lost a game against real madrid uh the especially the fans ex, uh, expect from you but let me you stop react you, jordy let me stop you there because don't you see in football now that we're very, very quick to dismiss losing. We don't even mourn the loss now. 
it's already we're moving on and and the and the coaches paint a rosy picture even on days they're second best i i see a ton of that now yeah because you you have so many games to play in in so many different competitions barcelona have got a clear wig this week because uh they are not playing the Copa del Rey's first round. Uh, the four teams qualified for the Champions League don't play the Copa del Rey first round, so they have a clear week. But you have League Copa del Rey, uh, Champions League. So in three or four days, you have another game, and you are you start thinking uh, to to these other games. But the same happened with Manchester City in in the team in, in which uh, Ilka Gundogan was playing before signing for Barcelona. And there you have uh, at Manchester City, you know him. You have this ultra competitive coach in Pep Guardiola, uh, and he's one of the coaches that uh, less stands the feeling of defeat. He he doesn't accept defeat at all. So there comes Ilkay Gundogan from that dressing room, entering into a, a Barcelona dressing room that uh, I think even if many players have changed, but of course Xavi is, is a. a a die-hard Barcelona fan. He's been for all his life. And I think he's, he still has a little bit this mentality of, well, we've come from dire straits in, in Barcelona. We've come from a from a very difficult situation. The club was nearly bankrupt. We are we're starting, we are nearly starting from scratch. We we may we still, even two days, um, sorry, two years after Joao Laporta uh became again president of uh, or chairman of Barcelona, we we still we are still allowed to lose a Clásico against Real Madrid because we still are in this kind of reconstruction works. But, you know, it's, uh, as I said, it's it's two years after Joao Laporta came and, and tried to reinvigorate Barcelona. It's two seasons, two full seasons. Barcelona won the league last season. You could say they won against all odds, probably. Yeah, OK. But they won the league. So this season, you expect more from Barcelona and Barcelona fans expect more from the team. So it, it's it's not normal to enter a dressing room and as a Spanish radio station told yesterday from a, a journalist from Barcelona, uh, Ilkay Gundogan was so angry because he entered the dressing room and he spotted two players right after the game checking their mobile phones. And... That's that's not the attitude after a game after classical. But Gundogan has been brought there to lead a lot of younger guys as well. He's coming yeah, from Manchester yeah, and, City. And that's the to, reason he and, was bought. So I think he this is actually do, very positive. Yeah, the the thing is, uh, on Sunday when when these uh, quotes were released, the first feeling was was, wow, this this is going to steer a big controversy because it's not normal for. A Barcelona player to to be so sincere, but then you reflect um, uh, you reflect after that and think, well, uh, as you were saying, Gundogan has been brought to Barcelona in, in order for him to be a leader and to be a, a, a not a teacher, but to uh, be beside the younger guys. So yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, this this is what you expect from a leader coming from a, a big team like Manchester City. So. Um, talking with the club, as a fellow journalists have done, uh, the, the first feeling was strange, but the feeling now is positive uh, because uh, they expected Gundogan to be a leader. And this statement, this quote, show that he's a leader. So uh, Barcelona have to take uh, what could have been a, a big controversy as a positive thing because it means they have in the dressing room a man who can be a true leader and and steer the rest of the of the squad, especially the the younger guys. Jordi, thank you so much. By the way, it's two to one Real Madrid over Barcelona. Two goals for Jude Bellingham and the young Englishman uh, uh, planted his flag, I guess, in uh, Clasico history in that one. Jordi, yeah. as always, we thank you from Barcelona, Spain. Keep up all the good work that you're doing, and thank you for coming on the program as always. Thank you very much, as usual. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, Jordi, by the way, thank you for the oh. pronunciation lesson as well. <laughs> you, you're welcome. Every time you need a pronunciation, a Catalan pronunciation lesson, here I am. You know that. Repitan ustedes. Bon mati. <laughs> bon mati. That's, bon that's mati. the way. That's right. the way. Thank you, Jordi. Bye-bye. Right. Thank you, Glenn.
That does it tonight for Soccer Matters on ESPN 97.5. And a big, big thank you again to Jordi Sunier for coming on. I mean, we're, we're blessed to have uh, his insight right from Barcelona, Spain. Special stuff right there. Uh, we always thank the Daspit Law Firm, daspitlaw.com, 713-CALL-NOW. Subscribe to the podcast, Spotify, Apple, and Google. You can also get it at ESPN975.com. Soccer Matters t-shirts and hats to benefit pediatric cancer patients and the 501c charity Snowdrop Foundation. Uh, you can get them at lamontbrands.com. Till next week, remember, soccer matters.